Hey, welcome back to Roundtown Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Here is the annulus and housing for the rear part of an A-type overdrive, the one that I'm gonna be putting in my Triumph TR4. One of the measurements that are in here is to measure the it's end float, and you've got a bearing up here and a bearing inside that you can't see. It's right about here or so. So I'm gonna pull this annulus out. I'm gonna replace the bearings just out of an abundance of caution. I've got spares here from Moss. Replace them. There's a spacer in there that controls that end float. I have a special tool that a gentleman on my favorite form was kind enough to loan me. So I'm gonna use that to measure that end float, put it all back together and it should be good to go. And it'll be like new for use as I continue the rebuild. So thanks for watching. Let's get it sorted. So first thing first, obviously I've got to push out the annulus so i'm just going to go over to the bench press push out from here that's going to come out from here so i've got to you know support it so that it's supported on the outer edge so i don't go jam this into whatever it's uh, resting on that'll fall out and then i'll get the larger bearing off the smaller bearing probably is going to stay in the housing so i'll be able to punch that out and like i said i've got new bearings somewhere around here oh in this bag here i've got new bearings so i'll be replacing putting those back on and pressing them on and then getting the spacer in there and just uh, getting this end float measured up and, and moving on. This, this special tool that I've had, I'll show you how that works. As you can see it right here in the corner, that's gonna make, hopefully make things a lot easier. So let's go over to the press, get this annulus out of here and get the bearings replaced. All right, not much to it here. I got the press set up. And again, like I said, I've made this so it can uh, be free of whatever it's resting on there. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna press that through. All right, so it's most of the way out of here. I'm just gonna grab a little hammer. You can see how much it's sticking out. And if you can hear that rattling in there, that's that spacer. So I'll go ahead and knock this out and get it back over to the workbench and get the bearings off. So there is the annulus released from the housing. So the housing is, is just that, it's an empty housing, except there, but that bearing is in there. So I'll be able to pop that out real quick. And then you've got the larger bearing down here and that right here is the spacer. And there's a little ledge here. That's what that rests on. So I'm gonna measure this spacer up and see how thick it is real quick. This was original to the, to the transmission. And it looks like about 154 thousandths, 155 maybe, give or take. So new bearings, I'm gonna reuse this and measure and see if I don't have to worry about a spacer. I do have a handful of other spacers here that I picked up from Rimmer Brothers, uh, a couple that are larger, a couple that are smaller, and that'll hopefully adjust that end float. And again, when I get to that point, I'll explain a little bit more. First, we're gonna get this bearing off, and that actually feels pretty good, but again, I got new ones, so I might as well go ahead and replace them. Got my handy dandy Harbor Freight bearing puller here, and much like I did when I was taking apart the transmission itself. I got these extension rods to let this open up a little bit further. You have to do that here. And this bearing is pretty tight clearance between the bearing outer shell and the uh, top of the annulus. So what I did to try to make that a little bit better is I took a grinding wheel and just shaved these, uh, the lip for the, for the bearing puller down a little bit to try to make it as thin as I could. And I'm not incredibly concerned about damage to the bearing because I am replacing it, but you know, if I can prevent damage, I'd rather do that. All right, I really wanna look under here to make sure that I've got the bearing lifted up as much as I can and that I'm not pinched on the, uh, there's an extra like little lip on the annulus there. I wanna make sure I'm not grabbing that. And I wanna to try to get as much under that bearing as I can. All right, so there's that. Go ahead and set the puller portion up here. All right, that's set up and ready to go. Might have to go over and grab the vise here just to kind of hold this. I don't know how tight this bearing is going to be. So let me, uh, let me try it here. And if not, I'll have to move over. All right, and periodically as you tighten, you want to check to make sure that you still have the bearing 
and you're not going to ride up right again this is a pretty thin grip that i've got on this so i don't i don't want the the uh, the lip to slip and start kind of riding up the side of the bearing so i don't mar the outer surface and i'm hoping it'll start sliding a little bit and i'll be able to reposition not giving myself any help with no leverage here oh there we go so that big break broke it away so now I'm going to take the tension off a little bit and go ahead and tighten this back down underneath so I can get a little bit better purchase on it center it up a little bit better again checking underneath here All right, that looks pretty good. So now hopefully I'll be home free. All right, there we go. That bearing's out of there. Again, that doesn't feel too bad. You can always save them for future use, I guess. And then the new bearing, I'm going to go over that and we're going to take this one over to the press and I've got a long tube that I'll be able to press on the inner race of the bearing or the inner portion of the bearing and press that all the way down and get it nice and uh, nice and snug up. So I'll go ahead and clean this surface up a little bit, make sure there's no little particles or anything in there. We'll take it over to the press and get that pressed down. All right, so like I mentioned, I had a long pipe and it's the same diameter, give or take, as the in inner portion of the bearing and obviously it's fitting around that the stalk or the stem of the annulus there. I'm just gonna go ahead, press it down until it seats. All right, give it a nice little oomph. All right, and it spins freely, so that's good. Now back over to the other side, and we'll start getting this thing pressed back into the housing and then we can do a measurement. So now that I got that larger bearing off, on, excuse me, I got the uh, small bearing out of the end here, and now right in here is the seating surface for the larger bearing. So you wanna inspect that seating surface, make sure you don't have anything weird going on in there, little chunkies of metal or something like that that's gonna interfere with fully seating that bearing. And then you wanna kinda of get it started a little bit so that it doesn't get crooked on you as you press it down. That is aluminum. This whole thing is aluminum, so you don't you want to get it tried and go in as straight as you can from the start so that you don't scar the aluminum. So in case you have to take this all back apart, you don't mess up that seating surface. So I just kind of walk it down a little bit. And just kind of get it in there. All right, and that's pretty good. Again, just you want to get that started and then you want to try to get it as centered up down here, looking at it straight down, try to get it as centered up. You can spin it a little bit, that'll help you see if it wobbles. And this looks pretty good, it's not perfect, but it's gonna be good enough. So now I'm gonna go back over to the press, put a piece of metal in here and press down while only supporting it from here so that the shaft here has room to, to travel. Got it set up on the press here, supported from the, from the bottom and not rubbing so that it uh, can go down and a nice big block of metal in there. I'm just going to press it down. All right, you kind of want to feel and keep an eye as you go down. Make sure the thing's not going in crooked. It looks pretty good. Give it a little oomph. All right, make sure it spins pretty freely. All right, that's good. And then you can look down through here. I'm not going to be able to show you on, on the camera, but you can look down in there and just barely see the bearing where it kind of seats and you cheat a little bit and make sure it looks seated. And like I said, you also have some amount of recess down here. It looks, I don't know, three eighths to half an inch or so. So that shouldn't be flush by any means. So it looks fully seated to me. So now we're gonna go back over to the workbench. I'll get the special tool and I'll show you how we measure the predicted end float based on the spacer I put in there. So this here is the special tool for, not, for measuring the annulus end float. If you look, Depending on where you look, if you find an original workshop manual, you'll see a cross-sectional view of a special tool that's pretty much similar to this, and it's a Churchill tool. Obviously, they don't make any of that stuff anymore, but uh, 
like I said, the gentleman on my forum reached out to me. I was, I was actually asking for help, reached out to me unsolicited and say, Hey, I've got one of the special tools if you want to borrow it. So shipped it all the way to California or from California to me and, uh, to help me out here. The only other way to really measure this is using a, using a, um, dial indicator, but kind of flopped around. That's, that's where you'll see the most people do it from the annulus side but this should be uh, a little bit more convenient. So you've got the inner portion here, and what the inner portion does is on the assembly here, the inner portion fits in here over top of the shaft. As you can see, it's hollow, and the spacer will be in there. So you'll put the spacer on that little ledge that I showed you at the beginning. And then this guy will go down and fit over top of that inner portion, like that. And where this guy sits, is on the landing ledge buried in there where that smaller bearing fits. And again, I'm sorry that the lighting isn't strong enough to show you the inside in there, but there's a little ridge in there where the smaller bearing is going to fit. So to set this thing up, get a nice flat surface and set the, set the portion up here. And it looks like I'm about negative two thousandths or so. So we're going to go ahead and zero up the micrometer or the dial indicator. And you want to kind of play with this a little bit, move it around, make sure you got an accurate reading. And as you tighten it, make sure that the dial doesn't spin like it is to me. All right, so that looks good. So as I mentioned, we got my 155 thousandths, 155 thousandths is what came with the car. I'll go ahead and drop that on the shaft and you want to kind of make sure that that's fully seated on the shoulder there. And then we'll go ahead drop this guy down and again make sure that's fully seated then you want to take this guy drop that down and that will deflect and then the spec here you want to see once you zeroed it and you can kind of look here right the thing had to wrap around a couple times so that's all right the spec is five to ten thousandths and it looks like i am right down the middle so seven and a half thousandths or so so lucky me I'm not going to have to use any spacers than what originally came with the car. So that's good. Not good that I wasted probably these spacers, I think are like 15 to 20 bucks a pop. So, you know, I wasted $60 on spacers. So I'll put them up for sale probably. But now I know that that end float, once I put that other bearing in there, that end float is going to be uh, about 7,000 or so, which is, which is exactly what I want. So that, that's really it. So now I'll go ahead, I'll press that small bearing in there. And Bob's your uncle, it's all set. So back over to press to get this little bearing pressed in. I've got it kind of started in there and push it down a halfway decent amount. So I've got a piece of wood here in a shim. And what this is going to do, these pushed together, is I don't want to take the chance of pushing this, the annulus back out. Now I don't think it would because there's more surface area in the larger bearing than the smaller but you never know. So I've got this shim in here and essentially what it does is allows that annulus to now be proud of the bottom of the housing. So now when I do and press on the bearing, I don't potentially push that shaft all the way through. So I got another little pipe here, same, same pipe as before, but a smaller, smaller size of it. And I need to adjust my, Size here. All right, we'll go ahead and press it in. All right, make sure it still spins freely, and it does. All right, and that's all there is to it. So about seven thousand end float in there. Everything's all set, ready to go. Now the next step will be put to, to put the um, oil seal in there and then get the coupling on. So as I mentioned, we'll put the seal in. So we'll just kind of hit, go ahead, get that started a little bit there. And a big old socket. Go ahead and get it seated. All right, so that feels about as far as it's gonna go. Now, unfortunately the coupling here, I, uh, I should have painted it and I did not. And it is way too cold now to be able to really paint this. So. That's going to be, uh, have to be for a future time, but that eventually will fit down on there and then we'll get that tightened up, hopefully. 
and get it uh, to back together. So we'll leave that for, for a, another time. Put the washer and the nut on here just so I don't lose track of that stuff. And now that annulus, a little bit noisy, but again, it doesn't have any oil in there. That guy's ready to go. So we'll move on to something else. But for now, that's all I got. So thanks so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.